Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today as we get into the presence of God, as we have church together. You may be watching this on Sunday or another day. If it's on Sunday, maybe it's during our regular English service time on Sundays at 3 o'clock. We have, a, have it on Facebook, or maybe you're watching it on YouTube. Maybe you're watching it on another day, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, later on in the week. But we thank you for joining together with us. And I hope, I hope that you're not just watching, but you're participating. And your heart of worship and your heart of praise is coming out. And you're experiencing the presence of God as we meet together and as we uh, uh, lift, up and lift up the name of Jesus, as we sing, as we, as we continue on. Uh, in the in the word of God, in the presence of God. And so I just want you to continue to have a, a heart that's engaged, that's listening, that's excited, that's paying attention, not just sitting and just kind of playing it and and it, but 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 lean into God because I believe that God has something for each and every one of us today. And I believe that God wants to speak to you and show you just a little bit more of who He is and how he wants to use you in your Christian life. We've been talking in this series, we've been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about the different gifts from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we've been looking at each of the gifts, and we've been going through them one, one week at a time. And opening up the Bible and seeing what these things mean and how we can use them in our lives, how we can ex what we can expect from the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to use us, to give those gifts to other people through us, what that will look like, what the gifts of the Holy Spirit as they are activated, what they will look like in a Christian's life. And so we've looked at a number of these spiritual gifts already. But I just want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is the text for our series. And in, this, in these verses, it has all of the gifts that we've been looking at. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10, it says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. So we're looking at each one of these gifts that God gives through the Holy Spirit. They are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, the gifts of healings, the working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. So nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that are listed in these verses here, but one spirit. And as we've talked from the very beginning, these gifts are not just to, they're not to lift us up. We are just the delivery person. God wants people to be drawn unto him. The Bible says, if, I, if the Son of Man be lifted high, then all people will be drawn unto him. We can lift Jesus higher, and people will be drawn unto him through these spiritual gifts. And each one of these is unique, but it's all given by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And each one of these gifts is also for the benefit of the person who's receiving it, so that they can be drawn closer to Jesus. It's for comforting, for encouraging, and for building people up. That is why God gives the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so that people can be encouraged in their walk with God. They can be strengthened as they continue their daily journey with Jesus. And they can be drawn to him and receive that strength that they need for that day. We can be those people filled with the gifts, filled with the Holy Spirit, helping people, being a blessing to people to draw them close to Jesus. That's the goals of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
Today what we're talking about is the gift of the discerning of spirits. We're going to look at the definition of those in just a little bit, but I want to read a few verses from the Bible, a few illustrations that show that the, the world that we live in is not just a physical, material world, but it is also a spiritual world. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may, may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have, having done all to stand. These verses show us clearly that the physical, natural world is not all that there is. But we live in a, in a, in a spiritual world. We live in a world that is filled with spirits and influenced by spirits. And we, even in our own created beings, the, 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 the beings that were created by God, it says that God breathed into man his, our spirits, his spirit. And so we also have spirits. It's the part of our lives that connect with God. And so it's the part of our lives that we cannot see. You can see our, we can see our physical body. We can, we can use our senses to touch. But there's more to us than just a body, flesh and bones. There's more to us just than that. But we have spirits as well. And there's also other spirits around. We live in a spiritual world. You may not be able to see it, but if you pay attention with your spirit, you can know that the world that we live in is not just a material world. It's not just what we can look at, feel, and touch. There are other things influencing and there are other things affecting the world that we live in. For example, sometimes when we hear a certain song, we can be influenced by that song, by the spirit of the song, by the spirit of that, the writer when he wrote that song, and our spirits can be influenced and shaped and changed by someone else's, by, by someone else's song that they wrote and they're singing. Sometimes it can be about places. Sometimes if something is done in a certain place for a certain length of time, there's spirits that attach themselves to that place and even as you go into a place, sometimes you can feel and you can sense the spirit of that place. Sometimes it can be a positive thing. Sometimes it can be a negative thing. A positive thing. When we were in worship today, we were listening to the songs. We were here in the presence of God. We, I could feel God's spirit touching my heart and just being, just filling me with his love and his kindness and his gentleness. The spirit of God is here in this place. And the same is true for other places and other, other things. We cannot see it with our eyes, but we can feel it with our hearts and our spirits. Let me read a couple of stories from the Bible. The spirit and the spirit world is real and it's true. Let me read in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. It says, now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out of, out of her that very hour. So we see that this spirit was upon this girl, and it was a spirit of fortune telling, a spirit of, of divination, of telling the future. And it brought this spirit through this girl, brought her masters a lot of money. But it was not a spirit that was from God. It was a spirit of divination. And the motivation behind it 
was not to help Paul, was not to, to, to go and tell the gospel and to, to, to preach the gospel, but the, the, bene, the, the goal of it, the motivation behind it, was for, was for money, was, for, was out of greed. And so Paul said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And that spirit came out of her that very hour. So in this example, it might look like, yeah, she's doing a great thing. She's saying, oh, these people, they're from the Most High God. She's testifying about God. But there was the spirit behind what she was saying was not the spirit of God, but it was the spirit of divination. It was the spirit of divination for profit and for material gain. And so Paul said, stop it. Come out in the name of Jesus. And it came out of her. So what we see is that in our world, there are many different kind of spirits, many different kinds of influences. These are a number of them that we see in the New Testament. What kind of spirits are there? Well, of course, there's the Holy Spirit. And that's the spirit that's the spirit of God that speaks to us, that encourages us in God's ways. There's also the spirit of men. Many times this word that's used in, in the original language is used to talk about a man's spirit also. Okay? But also, in addition to those two, we see unclean spirits in Matthew 10. Unclean means impure, foul, lewd, immoral, not pure. These are some of the things that we see in unclean spirits. So a spirit that is not holy, but it is immoral. It is impure. It is foul. This is the unclean spirits. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, is a demonic spirit. Okay, it says that the unclean spirits and the demons, they, it, it uses those two interchangeably in here. So we see that it's unclean spirits, but it's also the demonic as well. In Mark 9, we see a deaf and dumb spirit. So it was a spirit that made a person unable to hear and un unable to speak. In Luke 4, we see that there was a spirit of an unclean demon. In Luke 8, evil spirits. In Luke 13, we see the spirit of infirmity. So a spirit was upon a person making their body, their physical body, sick. And so we see that this is one of the things that, spirit, that spirits do. There's the spirit of divination, like we saw already in Acts chapter 16. There's the spirit of stupor in, in Romans chapter 11, the spirit of the world. But then there's also positive ones. We see the spirit of gentleness, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And then it goes back to some of the negative ones. Spirit who works in the sons of disobedience, the spirit of fear, the spirit of the antichrist, the spirit of error, the spirit of demons, foul spirits. But then there's also ministering spirits, the spirit of truth, the spirit of prophecy. These are all different spirits that are spoken of in the New Testament. So we see that the world that we live in is not just a natural world. Our world cannot be defined just in the natural our world cannot be defined just in the natural. I heard a guy, I, I was watching a, a YouTube video just, uh, just a couple of days ago uh, talking about a famous physicist, and he was, he, he was a, a non-believer. And he was just talking about his whole belief was that the natural world is all that there is. And all of the supernatural, he tends to just explain away by his theories and thoughts and, and, and different things like that. So there's no belief in the spiritual world. What he says is the natural is all that we have. But that's not true. The Bible shows us clearly that there, is a, there are many, many spirits that are affecting us and influencing us and influencing the world that we live in. Some positive, some negative. So how can we navigate as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, how do we navigate through life with all of these spirits wanting to control, 
wanting to influence, wanting to change the atmosphere and influence us to do the things that they want us to do. Obviously, there's some good. Obviously, there's some bad. But we need to make sure that we walk with Jesus and we know his ways. And so what, we, what do we need to do? How can we live in this life? How can we live in this world with all of these different spirits around us? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the discerning of spirits. Discerning, the word to discern, means to be able to see into a situation and to make a judgment about what is right and what is wrong. So discerning means to be able to look and see in a situation and make a judgment about what is right and what is wrong. Okay? So, so when we are discerning of spirits, it is when a person understands what kind of spirit is influencing a situation, an event, or a person. That person can see the motivation behind this situation or the motivation behind this person, the motivation behind this event. And they can say, this is what the motivation is here. And they can respond to it. Not just saying, oh, yep, this is the way it is, but responding to it and influencing it for Jesus. It is an ability to see through the motivation behind something through the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and it can help in a situation when maybe we don't know what to do or we don't know where to go or maybe we're being influenced by something and something is just isn't right in our heart and we're, God, help me through this and help me to speak into this situation or help me to, to, to know exactly what is right or what is wrong in this situation. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an, enablement, an, an enablement of the Holy Spirit that helps us to know what the spirit behind this situation is. It's the discerning of spirits. It can also be used to get to the very root of a problem or an issue. You ever had a situation happen when you're talking to somebody and they're telling you and this is happening and this is happening and this is happening and they're telling you this struggle or this thing that's going on, but you know that you, you, you can hear their words, but you know that there's something more behind what they're saying. Maybe they're changing the truth just a little bit in order to get you to think that this is the way it really is, or this is the, the motivation behind it. Discern, a discerning person can see into that and say, look, no, this is the truth behind what it is, and by the help of the Holy Spirit, they can bring the truth into a situation. See, when someone is discerning by the gift of the Holy Spirit, one of the spirits that we see in the Bible that is from the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And when someone is discerning, they can bring truth into a situation. Maybe it might sound good on the outside. Maybe it might sound like what they're doing is helping people. But the truth is there's a different agenda or a different motivation behind what they're doing. Like that girl in Acts chapter 16. It might sound good. Oh, these people, these guys here, they're from the Most High God. Well, maybe they might counter as an evangelist. Maybe they might say, oh, maybe she's one of them. But the truth is, the truth behind that is that she was doing it for profit. She was doing it to make her masters rich. And so Paul said, nope, get out of here. Get out of here, evil spirit, and cast that evil spirit out of her. And so, even in our lives, every day, you know, when you open Facebook or when you look at the news or something, maybe someone's saying that this is, this is the way it is or this is an explanation for this situation or maybe they're, 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 they're changing something just to make it sound good. 
we need to be discerning now more than ever in this world. Christians need to be discerning to be able to see what is the truth behind every situation. And we can do that through the help of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit gives the gift of the discerning of spirits. Let me read a few extra verses here. Hebrews 5.14. Hebrews 5.14 says, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. God does not want us just to be led by whatever situations around us. As the children of God, we have the authority of God. We stand with Jesus. He is our strength and he is our authority. But with him, we also stand with authority. And we can say no to the situations that are wrong. We have a right to do that. I always remember the illustration. God doesn't want us to just be like a thermometer. He doesn't want us just to say, to be a person that says, yep, this is right, or yes, that's wrong. He doesn't want us just to be able to say what's right and wrong, to know what's right and wrong, but he wants us to be like the thermostat or the, the remote control for the, the air conditioner. That that air conditioner actually changes the atmosphere of that room. It has the power to change the, the, the temperature in the room. So God doesn't want just a bunch of Christians who say, oh yeah, that's right, that's wrong, that's good, that's bad. No, he wants us to step into that situation and bring the truth, the spirit of truth into the situation and every situation that's around us. So when we go into a place, we go in with the spirit of God. We go in with power and strength, with the spirit of truth, with the spirit of wisdom, and we can bring a change into those situations that we enter into. Here's another verse. 1 John 4, verses 1 to 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who is in you is greater than he, who is in, than, he, than he who is in the world. There are many spirits in the world. We've read that whole list from the, from the New Testament. There are many spirits wanting to influence us, wanting to, to change us, wanting us to lead us down the wrong path. But God says, no, you don't have to be influenced by that. You don't have to give in to that temptation. You don't have to be influenced by that spirit. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. God has given us victory. God has given us authority. Stand up. Be discerning. Use that authority that God has given you to say, no, I'm going to stand for truth. I'm going to live by the spirit of truth. So, how can we increase in our spirit in order to be able to navigate through all of these voices, all of these spirits, all of these influences in the world so that we can walk in God's ways through our lives. The way that you can discern the spirits is to know the Holy Spirit. You don't have to know each and every spirit that's out there. You just got to know one spirit, the Holy Spirit. You don't have to know everything about a spirit of greed. 
You just got to know the Holy Spirit. You don't have to know the spirit, everything about the spirit of immorality. You just have to know the Holy Spirit. You don't need to know everything about the spirit of this and the spirit of that. No, just know the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is so faithful. He'll lead you into all truth. He'll be your helper. He'll be your comforter. He'll be your guide. He'll be your teacher. And he will lead you into all truth. You know, it's, it's, it's really similar to what they say about, about, um, about understanding how to live a life free from sin. It's not about knowing all of the sin. It's about living for God. It's about, you don't need to know everything about sin in order to, to, to be able to distinguish what's good and what's bad, you just got to know God. The same is true with all of the spirits. You don't need to know all of those things. You don't have to go and study all that stuff. I mean, it's good to be knowledgeable about it and read the Bible and understand that though the spirit world is real, yeah. But know the Holy Spirit. To be a person who discerns between spirits, just know the Holy Spirit. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit is the gift of truth, and he will lead you to know what is right and what is wrong. And so how do we grow in our understanding? How do we grow in our discerning? Get closer to the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that the Holy Spirit will help us to know the difference between different spirits. If we have one spirit, the Holy Spirit, we will be able to tell the difference between all of the other spirits. If we talk to someone, if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we meet someone, we talk to them, maybe we never met them before, but, we, but our spirit connects with them and the things that they're saying is true and, and, and they're talking about Jesus, they say, yeah, you know, you're, the, you're, this, the Spirit of God in you witnesses and brings confirmation that, yeah, this person, this person is filled with the Holy Spirit, and there becomes that connection. Or maybe you're talking to someone else, and, you know, they're talking about this about Jesus and that about Jesus, but something in your right, your inside of you is, just isn't right. And they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but they believe a little bit different about Jesus. And you start to... to have doubts about what they think, that's the Holy Spirit working in you. And you can speak to the truth in, when you speak to those different type of people. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. It says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. The way you can discern all of those other spirits is to build yourself up in the Holy Spirit. He will give you the discernment between different spirits. I would encourage you, spend time speaking in tongues. Spend time building yourself up, speaking in tongues. You know, Paul said, I speak in tongues because I want to build up my spirit, build up this, my heart and the strength of the Holy Spirit in me to rely more on the Holy Spirit, to depend more on the Holy Spirit. Do the same thing. Do the same thing that Paul did. Speak in tongues. Get into the presence of God. We're going to talk about speaking in tongues in the next couple of weeks. But I want to encourage you. Just spend time with the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues. Submit your heart, your emotions, and your soul to the Holy Spirit. And let Him be your guide. Let Him speak to you. Let Him reveal to you what is right and what is wrong in each and every situation. The Holy Spirit loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. And He wants to be your partner through life. He wants to be your leader through life. He wants to, to help you through life. Depend on Him. Depend on the Spirit of God. And through that, you'll be able to discern 
the truth and the error, the right and the wrong, and he will lead you in all truth. God loves you, everyone. God loves you. He's got a great plan for our lives. He is with you. And like we were seeing in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he's given us the tools. He's given us the tools to live a life full of his blessing, a life that is abundant. This is the life that he has for us, and these are the tools that he's given us. Let's pray together. Dear Holy Spirit, we lift you high. Holy Spirit, we lift you high. Holy Spirit, we give you the right place. You are the one true Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. That there is not one day that goes by that you are not with us. But every single day, we can rely on you. We can depend on you. Even the times when we're not paying such good attention to you, you're still there. And we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Holy Spirit, we choose as the people of God, we activate our will and we say God Holy Spirit we choose to give you a greater place in our lives we put ourselves aside we put our desires aside and say Holy Spirit we want you more become greater in our lives and we become less so that our lives can reflect the glory of God more and more, each and every day, from glory to glory. This is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you, before we finish here, if you don't have a small group, number one, I want to encourage you to get into a small group. You can contact our offices. You can contact our pastors. We have lots of small groups all around the city and all around different places. There are different small groups for different people. If you have never been filled with the Holy Spirit and you would like to, also talk to your small group leader. Talk to a pastor. Call us at our offices. Meet up with some of our pastors, some of our leaders. We would love to pray with you and see you filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can walk daily with the Holy Spirit. God loves you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of our service today. Have an awesome week. May God bless you in all that you do.